Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to, Jer to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed, on, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a, Le a Levite, when, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds. having poured oil and, water and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. May these words be to us our light and our life. Thanks be to God. Good morning. And I'm the youth assistant here at Mac Plymouth. Um, for those of you who don't know, I also grew up here in McAllister Plymouth Church, and um, this year I was able to travel with the youth on their mission trip to Chicago, and it was my fourth mission trip with McAllister Plymouth. I traveled on three as a youth myself. Corinne asked me to open um, the sermon time and talk just a little bit about the parable of the Good Samaritan, and I said, yes, of course, and how much time do I get? Because I know that all of them are gonna talk after me. The parable of the Good Samaritan um, is one that I think can we hear it all the time, and everybody knows it, and you know, Lauren, this is such an obvious parable for us to talk about on Mission Trip Sunday, right? But growing up, it was really one of my favorite parables. Um, I got to choose when I wanted to be baptized, and so I got baptized when I was 12 years old um, with my Baptist grandfather who dumped handfuls of water on my head right about there. Um, <laughs> But it was an important parable to me. And when I was 12 years old, of course, I thought about my neighbor as obviously my best friend living next door to me, but also the kids in school who maybe were not as popular as the other kids and, and who didn't seem to have a friend and how could I be a friend to that person. Um, and that was really what McAllister Plymouth taught me. Growing up, and, and thinking about my neighbor over the years, that neighbor has also been uh, the people in inner city Kansas City where I went on my very first mission trip, uh, the people of San Lucas Toliman in Guatemala, my second mission trip, or the people of Nogales, Arizona and Mexico, my third mission trip um, here at Mac Plymouth. Um, GLBTQIA and other letters that may have been added, um, those people who are still struggling or who may feel on the outskirts still, McAllister Plymouth has taught us to be a neighbor to those people. Now I think about my neighbors being the Eritrean family who lives across the street or the Somali on the train on my way to work, um, the refugee, the immigrant, the people who others in the United States might pass by. And I appreciate that McAllister Plymouth helps us not pass by those people. And now, of course, I can add our friends in Chicago from this most recent mission trip. So I'm going to pass off the mic and let the youth tell you about our experience. Good morning. My name is Rosalie. I'm a, I'm a sophomore at Central High School. This year, the McAllister Plymouth United Church Senior High traveled to Chicago, Illinois for our 2016 mission trip. As a group, we spent the work or the week doing service work in low-income neighborhoods of Chicago. We spent time in gardens, helped at a local soup kitchen, and we spent a lot of time helping a Spanish church move. 
I originally went because I thought that it, I knew that it would be fun and because my friends were going. And I did have a lot of fun, but I also did learn a lot. Over the week, a few speakers came to share their stories of hardships. I knew that people lived through hardships every day, but I had never heard them told firsthand. I think it's easy to make fast judgments about people when you don't know their story and where they come from. Issues surrounding poverty are complicated and there are no easy solutions. The mission trip was a valuable experience to me and will influence how I choose to help others throughout my life. I'm going to be reading for Max, who is currently cheering on his mother in the marathon, so we gave him a pass this morning. So Max wrote, this past summer we went to Chicago to help out neighbors below the poverty line along with some nonprofits. I am an introverted person, so I was surprised when I realized my favorite part of the trip was a group activity. On the second to last day in Chicago, we had a closing ceremony with the organization that was hosting us, and after we finished the ceremony, we walked to a field and played ultimate frisbee. This was one of my favorite parts of the entire trip because in my eyes, this was our version of a closing ceremony for the week. It was great to have everyone working together and having fun, and frisbee is one of my favorite sports. After we played ultimate frisbee, we went to this Puerto Rican fair and ate really great food. Another part of the trip that I really enjoyed was playing an amazing game of rummy, card game, with three other people, which just ended last week at the youth retreat. Although the service learning portion of it was fun and informed me about a lot of the issues of Chicago, the ultimate frisbee game and rummy games were more memorable to me. Hi, I'm Emma, and I'm going to be reading a reflection. On Wednesday, we had an inspirational speaker come to talk to us about her life and past. I cannot explain the emotions and feelings I experienced when she came to speak. Latere performed two raps for us that were absolutely encouraging and astonishing. One quote really stuck with me. You are, you are, you are who you've been waiting for. It's a section from her rap, You Are. When La Terre performed this in front of us, she had all of us repeat the phrase back to her. When we repeated this, I felt very strong and empowered. It made me feel comfortable with being myself and living with my mistakes and choices I have made through my life. My name is Grace. On Friday, we went to a Salvation Army branch that provides temporary housing for families with children. We started out by talking to Pam, who works at the Salvation Army as a volunteer coordinator, in addition to many other things. She was very grateful to have our help, because the Salvation Army in Illinois is very underfunded. For about a year, the state of Illinois has been unable to come up with a budget. This means that organizations like the Salvation Army are not getting funding from the state. If this budgetless limbo continues, folks are predicting that the Chicago public schools will be unable to open. And it looks like this nonsense is going to keep up until the governor of Illinois is out of office. Krista, a door volunteer who worked with us that day, told us that the budget has been an issue in Illinois for a long time now. She explained that the current governor was a sort of businessman turned politician who campaigned on the idea of being able to manage money well. Sounds familiar. <laughs> Well, it hasn't turned out well, especially for the Salvation Army temporary housing place that we visited, that is now looking at a deficit of about $450,000. That's a lot of moolah. Well, on to something a little more cheerful. I was very impressed with the setup of the Salvation Army branch that we visited. It is located in an old Holiday Inn, so residents stay with their families in the old hotel rooms, complete with the bathroom. They offer computers for the purposes of finding employment or looking for more per permanent housing, as well as three meals a day for the residents. Since, ch since children are the main focus of the branch, Salvation Army staff are diligent about making sure that each child attends school, as well as all the meals, especially breakfast. Our job at the Salvation Army was decidedly unglamorous. We deep cleaned the tables and chairs in the cafeteria, which was a nasty job. The tables had these little grooves along the sides, and we ran the tines of plastic forks through there, dislodging the collective grime and wiping it up with rags. Despite our unappealing job, working at the Salvation Army was one of my favorite days on the mission trip. I love the feeling of accomplishment that comes with a good day's work, and the joyful feeling that comes from working with such an amazing group. I'm Sophia. Oh. Um, in my opinion, one of the best moments on the mission trip was the same as Max's when we all played a group of in the game of Ultimate Frisbee for about an hour and a half. I felt that at that time we were all a group and we were all a community and there was no one who was alone and everyone participated. And it was the first time in the week that I felt that outside of working and helping the other people that were there, we were all just enjoying each other's company. 
Hi, I'm Ben and I'll be reading part of my blog post from the week of the mission trip. Uh, two things have really struck me this week. The way that the city is changing and the people that are working to change it. It's hard not to have mixed feelings about gentrification. I look around and think, wow, this neighborhood looks really nice. But I know that the people who have lived their entire lives there don't get to experience that niceness because rising rent and property taxes push them out. Can gentrification really be good for a neighborhood if it loses its community in the process? The people we have met and worked with are incredibly passionate, strong, and hopeful. The seemingly impossible challenge of bringing peace, justice, and harmony to the impoverished and violent parts of Chicago has become the lives of these people. JP, the program director uh, at DOOR and a native Chicagoan, has inspired me to no end. His story is one of so much pain and confusion and despair, but it isn't really mine to tell. I can say that he has mounted overwhelming odds because of his strength and God's help. He has become a person that devotes his life, not just his job, but his life, to the service of people and the community. He has gotten through so much personally and still retains an amazing ability to be selfless. Uh, my name is Miranda and I wrote a uh, reflection. Um, one of the things I took away from Chicago was how the people we were helping didn't seem any different from, than us. Society had seemed to build up mission work to be kind of like we are helping people in worse situations than us. But the way they said it, people in society said it was almost as if they were below us. People in Chicago talked about fighting negative stereotypes about their community. They strove to defeat the notions that because they were poor and not white, they, no one should be shocked if they dropped out of high school or got arrested. They needed to defeat these low expectations and negative standards. As a white person, I'm expected to get good grades and go to college, but does society have the same expectations for people of color? I was inspired by a woman named Latora, who spoke to our group on Wednesday. Like the other people we'd heard talk, she had grew up in very tough circumstances and had to overcome them to succeed. Latera is one of the most powerful and positive people I've ever met. When she talked, everyone listened. For me, there's so much negativity everywhere and in everything, and she just seemed to completely shatter all of that. She was the one who made me first think about how privileged I am and how there's no negative expectations that are holding me back. Latoya's powerful, most powerful message was, you are who you've been waiting for. All of this has really made me think about how to deal with my privilege. See, it's not just something I can shake off, and it's been with me since the moment I was born. And no matter how many people I helped in Chicago, it doesn't change the fact that I'm back here living my privileged life again, and that really bothers me. While all the work and the people we met in Chicago was important, I think the most critical thing I took away was a more concrete realization of what my privilege looks like and how I can use it to help people who are oppressed by society. My name is Sam. Um, the word change has many different meanings to many different people. For most, change can be for the better. It can be a turning point towards um, becoming a healthier, more hardworking, or more caring individual. But for others, um, change can be negative. It can mean downgrading homes. Um, mean, it can mean being forced to move away from loved ones. It can mean becoming someone you don't want to be. Um, this summer, I chose to bring the wor this word with me and think upon change. Uh, Chicago turned out to be more than expected. The city itself became a fable with a lesson around every corner and every alley and up every seemingly gigantic building. Um, during the trip, our group was both able to see and hear of change in action. As the city of Chicago is gentrifying, we found out that it is the poorest neighborhoods that are experiencing the most change. And with that, within that, we are told that Chicago is in such a stretch for money that their public schools might not be able to open sometime in the near future. During the week, we also heard incredibly heartbreaking stories from two individuals who described their tough childhoods growing up in Humboldt Park a historically Colombian neighborhood in Chicago. First, we heard the story of Juan Pablo, the director of Door Chicago. JP had told us the tragic story of his personal life and the more amazing changes that he has experienced, it, and experienced in order to get where he is now. The second story, story was from the motivational rapper Latere, 
Miss Letteri explained change in her own awesome way. She rapped about her struggles through childhood and being told how to look and, and how, she was be, how she had been told how to look, to look and act, only to come to the realization that society was wrong and that she doesn't need to change her physical appearance for others. She is who she is, and people who can't accept that fact are simply just haters. Throughout the week, I was able to see the great power of change. I was able to no matter to see that no matter how tragic the past, it is with change that we see greatness. Change is what bring, com brings communities back together. It is the product of personal growth and learning from mistakes. It is the process of spiritual movement, and most of all, it is a philosophy on life that brings out promise and love in times of need. We need to be able to see change in our own lives in order to help change the lives of others for the better. Even in our own group, I saw changes. As we welcomed and warmed up to our new youth minister, Corinne, and as I would then go on to experience the wilderness at a whole new level, I was glad that this mission trip had ended up as not only a physical trip, but as also a very spiritual one. Thank you.